Hi everyone, Jason here from Off The Beaten Path and today is the start of our three-day January 2023 Vic High Country trip. Uh, we started off in Mansfield and um, from there took the Mount Buller Road out to the start of the Mount Sterling Road uh, where we aired down. Um, we did have to change our plans mid-trip on this trip due to a couple of track closures. Uh, we didn't get to go exactly the way we wanted to go, but we took the Mount Sterling Road around to Telephone Box Junction uh, and the circuit road was actually open now. So earlier in December that was closed, uh, but it was open. Uh, so we are able to take that through um, onto Cornhill Road, um, uh, which then linked up with the circuit road. Um, and then we headed down Binderee Road to Binderee Falls, which was our first stop. Um, hadn't been there for a few years, so it was great to check that out. Um, and then from Binderee Falls, we continued down Binderee Road um, and then on to Binderee Hut, which I'd never actually been to before. Um, now, shout out to the subscriber. Um, you know who you are, who ran into us at Binderee Hut. That was pretty awesome. Um, I think that's the first time that's actually really happened to me that I've run into one of the people that watch these videos out on the track, so that was pretty cool. Um, and um, from Bindery Hut, then we continued on down to Pikes Flat Huts. Um, it is marked on the HEMA as, as ruins, and, and that's um, fairly, fairly accurate, really. Um, now, from that point, um, we took a 16-mile Jeep track, um, up to the Bluff Link Road uh, and then up to Bluff Hut, which it was great to get back to and visit. Um, Bluff Hut is um, an amazing hut that was um, a working uh, cattleman's hut for a lot of years. Um, there is a um, walking track near there that takes you up to the Bluff, uh, which on a clear day gives you great views. It's uh, 1,726 metres of elevation. Uh, you'll see why we didn't do that on this trip. Um, from there, we continued along uh, Bluff Track to Lovick's Hut, where we stopped for lunch. Um, continued on Lovick's Track, um, Bluff Track rather, and um, joined on to the King Billy Track, which is um, a really nice scenic track, not particularly difficult, um, but a really nice track. Um, to drive and again I hadn't actually done that uh, for a few years so it was nice to get back and see that country again um, and then King Billy actually takes you out onto the end of Howitt Road and from there it was a short run down to Howitt Hut uh, where we had intended and did in fact camp for the night in one of the camping spots around Howitt Hut there. Um, <clears throat> I quite enjoy camping up at Elevation um, the weather changes uh, fairly quickly um, and it can be quite interesting you can get some amazing sunsets and sunrises uh, so that is day one without any more talking guys let's get into it Here we are starting off in Mansfield and as you can see on the screen there, I've got Luca on the left in his white twin-locked GU Patrol and Matt in his 150 series Proto uh, and he's got a rear locker and no lift on that. Um, so first time Luca's come on a trip with us, um, Matt you will have seen on a few trips before. Um, not going to say too much, but you might see that Proto in too many more trips after this one. Um, anyway. We'll get to that when we get to it. So uh, we all met up here at Mansfield and we're heading from Mansfield um, up towards Mount Buller um, and we're actually planning to take the Mount Sterling Road. So um, yeah, we just turned on to the Mount Sterling Road here and um, aired down. There's a nice little spot there just after the um, turn off where you can air down on the Mount Sterling Road. Now I didn't include too much footage along here because I've done this trip recently and a lot of this was actually filmed um, 
in um, my Easy Way to Craig's Hut video. So this footage here now is after Telephone Box Junction and we're on the Circuit Road. So the Circuit Road, uh, this is the Circuit Road that cuts through the middle of Mount Buller, which was closed last time I was up here, so I didn't get to go this way. Um, so it goes through uh, from Telephone Box Junction to Howquah Gap, pretty much, um, or the tail end of Cornhill Road and joins back onto Circuit Road. Uh, you can see here exactly why this road has been shut. Um, they're still doing some repairs here, obviously, um, and just past this uh, second excavator, um, after this oncoming traffic passes us, you can see what it looks like basically the, the entire roads had to be rebuilt and restabilized there, um, which is clearly why back in December this was this was just not open. Um, they've, they've obviously had to do a huge amount of work to get this back open. And at this time, uh, which was in January, Cornhill Road was, was also not open. Um, so we've come around here to the junction where you've got the monument track on the left, which takes you up to Craig's Hut. Um, that's sort of the, the more challenging way to get to Craig's Hut. Circuit Road continues straight ahead. And in this case, we're taking Bindery Road down towards Bindery Falls, which is our first stop on this trip. Um, this is all pretty easy, uh, easy driving here. It's um, nothing too difficult. At this point, all pretty much accessible with two wheel drive vehicles, uh, if you were so inclined. Just coming up uh, on the parking area for Bindery Falls, which is just on the right here. The pedestrian access track into Bindery Falls is just over there on the left, just between those uh, ferns. You can see a bit of a gap there. So I hadn't been to Bindery Falls for a, a couple of years. So it was nice to uh, nice to get back there. It's not a not a very long walk, a few steps sort of up and down a bit and this is along the walking track you get your first sort of glimpse of the falls there not heaps of water coming over but enough that you can certainly see it that's for sure probably a similar amount to last time I was here I haven't seen it you know after heavy rains a little bit closer now still on the walking track And the cool thing with Bindery Falls is that you can actually get to the viewing area at the end of the track. It's actually around almost behind the falls uh, in under that rock overhang, uh, which is pretty cool. So just making our way down here, you can hear the waterfall. We're pretty close between the uh, tree ferns, man ferns, I think some people call them. I know them as tree ferns. We're lucky there weren't too many other people here. There were a couple of others, so I did have to be a bit judicious with my camera. Um, but you can see here, you're definitely in under that rock shelf, um, which the water cascades off. You get a really good view of um, the waterfall from here. So I've just moved down a little closer. And finally from the end of the viewing area, looking back down. So it falls onto those rocks and then creates a little bit of a stream there flowing away. Quite a nice view there from Bindery Falls. Um, yeah, if I'm in the area, um, which I don't get to this part of the high country that often, um, definitely worth uh, checking in and um, having a look. From here, we were heading a little bit further down Bindery Road and onto Bindery Hut. So that road over there on the far side goes to the Upper Hauqua camping area. It's a dead end road that just goes to the camping area and there's a number of hiking tracks down and along there. As you can see, we were lucky somebody has come across this before us and uh, done the job fairly recently by the look of those cuts of uh, clearing the path so always nice when you find that and they've even left enough room 
which is uh, certainly good. Uh, just coming up here on Flat Spur Camping Area, which is on the way to Bindery Hut. Not necessarily marked on the Hema maps for whatever reason, but there's a shelter here, uh, tables and chairs, a um, number of camping spots and a long drop toilet as well. Not too far past the camping area, you'll come across this little river crossing that we're just about to see on screen, uh, which takes you across to Bindery Hut. Um, pretty low today when we're here, not a lot of flow in it, um, nice easy crossing, a little bit rocky on the exit, but um, pretty straightforward really. Um, I can imagine that um, times when there's been a bit more rain, uh, this crossing could, could well be um, somewhat deeper than what it is uh, just at the moment. And I'm pretty sure the flow from Bindery Falls actually makes its way down here as well, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, it's big sheet rock here on the exit. Nothing too technical. And the hut is literally right there and there's quite a large um, camping area as well. You can see it extends down there for quite a distance. There's a long drop as well. There's Bindery Hut, which we'll get to in just a minute. Uh, so Matt coming across now in his Prado. Nice and steady. Tiny little wheel lift there on the exit. And Luca coming across in, in the big GU. Barely got the bottom of his bull bar wet. Nice little wave there on the front left wheel. Let's go and check out Bindery Hut. So, a little bit of a low entrance, as you can probably tell. And um, not a hut that you'd want to try and shelter in from the snow. I think sleep and whatever get in through those uh, log gaps. But it's still pretty cool. Um, and definitely gives you a bit of shelter um, during normal weather. And look, normal rain, it'll probably give you a bit of shelter. But just if there was wind and sleep coming in, it's going to find its way in through those gaps. So um, our first um, first stop, there's the rigs parked up opposite the hut. And just looking around, probably panning a little bit too fast there. Um, you can see the camping area goes down quite a long ways and there's the long drop uh, servicing this camping area. So shout out too to the subscriber um, that uh, came and said g'day. Um, we're, we're just getting ready to leave and uh, I've got a tap on the wind, wind, window of the car. So yeah, that was pretty awesome. Um, first time I think I've run into somebody who's actually a subscriber and they've come and said g'day. So sorry if I was a bit distracted. Or, um, but yeah, that was awesome. So thanks for coming and saying g'day. You know who you are. And um, yeah, from there we headed up 16 mile Jeep track. And um, yeah. It wasn't too long before we found this. Basically, the springs opened up on the track and softened it right up and caused this erosion. You could see how wet that early section was. Nothing too difficult, but it's the kind of thing that when it gets a fair bit of traffic through it, it has the potential to open up and create a real hazard on the track there. Uh, that's for sure. But yeah, it wasn't too much of a challenge for us. And um, as you can see here, it's not too long and you're on one of those typical high country tracks where you're elevated up, you've got a big drop off on one side, you've got a hill on the other side. They're all similar but different. Um, and one of the cool things I love about driving in the high country is you've often got a view uh, out one side of the vehicle. So from Bindery Hut, actually we're not on 16 mile Jeep track. What am I talking about? I'm getting confused. We're heading down to Pikes Flat Hut. That'll teach me for not keeping the uh, not keeping the map a little bit more top of mind. So yeah, we're heading west from Bindery Hut um, down to Pikes Flat, Pikes Flat Hut, which is um, marked on the Hemas as ruins. Um, and we thought we would just go and 
check it out. Um, since we're in the area, we were originally going to take uh, Bluff Link Road, but uh, decided to go this way and then take 16 Mile Jeep. So we're not on the 16 Mile Jeep track yet. <clears throat> this is just the Link Road heading west from Bindery Hut to Pikes Flat. Um, and uh, there's a few sections along here where you get um, some great views of the river. There's a whole bunch of little tributaries past Bindery Hut that feed into the river. So the, the further west you go, the bigger the river gets. It's actually the Haukwa River um, that it's feeding into and makes its way down towards uh, Fry's Hut ultimately. So as you can see, not a difficult drive along here, um, but pretty scenic. Um, you've got views out across the valley there for a lot of the track. It's not terribly wide. You get some good glimpses of the river. Uh, as you can see on the screen there, this was actually shot out the driver's side window. Um, so quite a decent drop off down to the Haukwa River there. Actually wasn't room to get out and film that, so I just shot that uh, straight out the side of the uh, car window and if you think you can see an open area up ahead you certainly can that is Pikes Flat um, where Pikes Flat Hut is located or the ruins thereof turns out um, whatever ruins there were of the original hut um, somebody has rebuilt them but it's it's a very modern sort of just corrugated iron structure so didn't take a lot of time to look at it. You can see there's a long drop uh, on the left over there. The grass here is pretty long, so I'm not sure that this campground is heavily used. Um, you see there's a few campsites there that have had the grass mowed or pressed down from use. Definitely a lot of long grass. That um, crossing of the Hauka River there um, takes you up to Cornhill Road. We were originally going to come in that way, but Cornhill Road and that track over there were actually shut so we weren't able to come that way. That is um, Pike's Hut as it currently stands. Um, yeah, it didn't look really like it had much history. It's just, you know, somebody stood up some um, corrugated iron. Uh, so we, we didn't um, get out and um, have a look at that one. Just had a bit of a look around the uh, camping area here and then made our way back to the main track to actually head up on 16 mile jeep track this time. So our run from here is 16 mile jeep track is about 6 k's or so and then we get on to um, the end of Bluff Link Road and then turn onto Bluff Track up to Bluff Hut. Um, so it's it's about um, probably all up. It's probably about uh, nine or ten k's. Not too long a run at all. Um, again, there were some sections of the track here that were a little bit damp. Um, I'm not sure that's from rain. I think that's again springs just causing water to run down the mountain. Still getting some glimpses there of the, uh, one of the tributaries actually that feed down into the Hauka River. A little bit rocky through here. Um, yeah, this is a tributary feeding down to the Hauka River. Quite pretty, not particularly deep though, um, but nice little river. Nice easy crossing as well. Um, exit's a little bit wet, but plenty of traction for us at this particular time. So I have done this trip before, um, but I came up Bluffling Road last time, so I'd never done 16 mile jeep before. Um, Luca actually suggested we take this track, so it seemed like a good idea. Um, always open to drive tracks I've never driven before. Another little puddle there, barely a crossing, we'll call it a puddle. And um, yeah, look, getting up through this part of the high country, it's so accessible. Um, just coming in off Buller, 
and um, Bluff Hut, Lovick's Hut, King Billy Track. Um, the whole area is just awesome and one of my favourite parts of the high country. One of, I think, one of the most scenic parts. We don't, on this trip, get the full benefit of that because, uh, as you'll see, the higher we get, the foggier it sort of gets. Um, bit of a steady climb here up this section of 16 mile jeep track but um, as you can see it's it's a good solid base it's not rutted or slippery or anything like that and the inevitable hairpin turn when you're climbing up these hills quite a twisty track as you're probably gathering this one as well um, so it does keep you driving you, you don't sort of just drift off driving a straight track um, certainly keeps you paying attention and you can maintain a fairly decent pace on most of this early section that's for sure you can see here a bit of, bit of carnage again somebody's come in and cleared it for us um, if it wasn't so early in the day we probably would have stopped and gathered up some firewood there um, but um, some all the hard work was done for us there um, <laughs> and yeah we've just reached that uh, intersection with bluff track so it's just a couple of k's up here to bluff hut not too far at all And again, you can probably start to see, um, the camera cleans it up a bit, but you're probably starting to see a bit of that mist in the air. And the higher we get, the mistier and foggier that it's, it's, it's actually getting. One of the seasonal closure gates. All the tracks in this area are seasonally closed. So I always find it interesting when they still have gates. I mean, maybe historically they didn't all close. Um, some great views just there off to the right, as you would have seen. here on this section but again still nothing difficult on most of this most of this whole track all the way through any four-wheel drive um, with reasonable tires and um, decent clearance as I said Matt's Prado doesn't have a lift and he certainly had no clearance issues on this section of the track um, it is it's gonna be fine to um, to take on this trip And yeah, as you can see, this fog's really set, setting in. So when you get up to Bluff Hut, which is not far away at all, we're just actually pulling in now. Um, on the left-hand side of the road, opposite the entrance into Bluff Hut, there is a really great spot to get an awesome photo and some lookouts just off to the left there on that grassed area. Um, normally, there's a great opportunity there. That wasn't the case today, so we didn't head over there. Likewise. There's a, um, there's a really good walking track uh, that you can do from Bluff Hut um, up to the near, nearby um, summit of uh, the Bluff. Um, again, that's, that's 1,726 metres. We didn't do that today because there would have been no point. Um, but uh, definitely two things you can do at Bluff Hut when the weather is permitting. Bluff Hut is in really good condition. It's a really popular destination with um, horse riding tours. Um, they've got a yard here, as you saw, um, and it's um, maintained by one of the original families. Many by parks, but still maintained Popular spot, uh, Bluff Hut, for horse riding, so well kitted out inside for seating and tables typical high country fireplace and uh, plenty of information there explaining the history of the ownership uh, starting with the Stoney family and then the Wares and the Davidsons local country people cattle people and grazing ended in 05. 
So the hut's managed by Parks Victoria and the Stoney family are still the custodians of this hut. Certainly one of the better maintained, better condition, high country huts that you'll find, well worth a visit. And yeah, as you saw there, I mean, it's just a great hut. It, it was rebuilt um, in, I think, about 0809, so um, it's not the original bluff hut. Um, bushfires, as they're prone to in the high country, have taken their toll on a number of huts. Um, that the Stoney and Lovick families were heavily involved in the rebuilding of uh, these two huts in this area. And um, they're definitely some of the best huts anywhere in the high country. Um, and, and so popular and that's why it's important that we all you know continue to respect these facilities that are available to us in the high country um, you know in the rare instance you find yourself caught in very inclement weather they they certainly can be life-saving they're obviously not for day-to-day -day camping in there's a campground for that um, but they're certainly there as a refuge if required um, now the tracks here don't look super wide as you can tell um, but here's proof that you know if you really have to you can usually find a way to move over to the side and um, let some oncoming traffic make their way past you. Now I did find um, compared to last time I did this track which was probably two three years ago um, uh, it was a lot more eroded um, and had a lot more um, wombat holes and yeah just generally not as smooth I remember this two three years ago being quite a smooth drive and um, not too bumpy at all um, it was definitely something that you wanted to take a little slower in sections there was nothing difficult about it it was just um, just a bit rough and um, not uh, not smooth and that's just a function probably largely of the very heavy rains that we had in late 2022 where um, the sand and soil on top of the rocks probably just been eroded you can see visibility still not all that great It's about eight, nine k's from Bluff Hut through to Lovick's Hut, so not that far. Normally on sections like this you get some cracking views both sides, but that certainly wasn't going to happen today. With the amount of fog and cloud that had enclosed at these higher altitudes. So we're up at about 1600 metres um, in this area at this time. And uh, you know when you're getting up high you start seeing those snow gums, they're quite eerie. Um, in uh, in this sort of light, There's the stunted, twisted gum trees um, that are unique to the high country, as far as I know. Again, just another rocky section there. Um, gives you a bit of an idea of what this track is like. Um, as always, you know, we've condensed several hours of travel here, you know, a full day. I think we met in Mansfield at about um, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning and uh, we get to Howard Hutt about 4.30 in the afternoon. So, you know, there's a good several hours driving and what have you in there that uh, has all been con condensed down to just under an hour. So, um, showing you what we can to give you an idea of what the track's like, but um, there's, there's a lot left for you to see and discover yourself. It was trying to rain at times, but never quite got there. Just a few sort of uh, drops here and there, but not actual proper rain. You 
can see sections like this, um, visibility is not great at all and the trees just emerge out of the fog as you make your way across this open area. Again, making your way through that forest of stunted snow gums. This section's, um, you know, eroded a little bit, so it looks like somebody's done some track building there at uh, one time or another, for whatever reason. Um, we just took it slow and steady, didn't have any issues, but um, maybe traction going the other way could be a bit of an issue. It was quite surreal going through the fog with the snow gums like this. That's why I've included this, even though it's kind of similar to other footage. It was just very surreal having these twisted trees emerge out of the fog ahead of you. Um, I don't think the camera is probably doing it justice, to be honest. Um, it's such a unique landscape. Certainly getting close to Lovick's Hut now. This is actually just coming up, I think, on the turnoff. Uh, yeah, so just on the right over the uh, frame, you can see the turnoff to Can Creek Track. Um, another one that I've never driven. Um, I think Matt and Luca, who were with me on this trip, have both driven that before in the past. Um, it is marked as an easy track on the um, HEMA maps, but um, as is often the case, that may or may not be the case. Um, that'll join you up with Brock's Road and you can actually loop, loop, loop back around to King Billy if you want or head back west, either or. But as you can see, it's not too far past there and we're coming into Lovick's Hut, um, which is um, like Bluff Hut, um, again, uh, another really well-maintained hut and very popular for uh, horse riding groups. Long drop toilet and campground here as well. You can see the long drop there on the left. And there's a few people here. We got in early uh, to grab a spot to have some lunch, luckily, because you'll see later on when we're leaving, it's um, remarkably busier. You can see there's a great spot there for um, a large group to gather around a main, main bonfire. Um, uh, well away from the hut, which is good. Uh, and again, plenty of information. So as you can read the there, Jack Lovick began work on this hut back in the 1959-1960 grazing season. Okay, it looks like there's been a snake around. Let's go over and check out the hut. So the sign there said very active snake over near the, uh, the fire pit there, so didn't go over there poking around. As you can see, it's another quite large hut with uh, very solid round support timbers um, supporting the main structure. The store is really solid here. door as well. Um, lots of corrugated lots iron. Of food for horses. Lining the walls. The yards here, popular spot. People on horse tours. Really nice stone paved floor in this hut. Some good log seating. Massive fireplace. A workbench over there. Kitchen bench. Really well maintained hut and great condition. Amazing to think of the work that would have gone into these flagstones here. Some of these are huge. Definitely a hut worth visiting and not that difficult to get to.
So yeah, we had a great lunch stop there. Um, always, always great to see Lovick's hut. Um, love the stone flagging on the floor, and um, it's um, it's always been well maintained and looked after. And as you can see, there's there's a heap more vehicles here, even in the short time we've been stopped for lunch, and a bunch more people have rocked up to check it out as well. So. I mean, keep in mind this was early in January, so it's um, after New Year's, but in that sort of Christmas, New Year holiday period, um, so not surprising that you're going to run into a few people. Ideally, you want to visit these places outside the peak seasons, outside, you know, the Christmas, New Year period and the Easter periods. Um, June long weekends, usually fairly busy as well, but maybe not quite as busy. Um, so yeah, once once we head off from Lovick's hut, um, very quickly the track turns a lot rockier and a lot rougher. Um, and again, I haven't put all of them in, just in the interest of keeping this video to a manageable size. None of them were super difficult, just really slow and steady, the kind of things you need to really just take your time over, they're pretty rough. Your vehicle's going to move around a lot, and um, the length of them did vary, but um, Certainly spoke to a few people coming the other way that warned us about these sections of track um, and how much they've deteriorated in the last couple of years. Uh, it certainly was not like this when I came through in 2021. You can see the sheet rock there just totally exposed and continuing up. So yeah, pretty slow and steady through here. Varying a little bit, but um, all the way through here was all pretty rocky uh, and bumpy. So, yeah, not difficult. No, no issues with traction or anything like that. Um, but just really slow going. Pulling in here, this is Pitcher Point, which is a couple of k's past Lovick's Hut, and normally a really good lookout spot. Um, this is right down the end of Pitcher Point, which is just off the main main track. You can't miss it if you keep an eye out for it. It's on the left-hand side as you come around one of the corners, and the bottom end of it you do effectively drive through even on the main track. Um, there's a couple of camp spots down the end there that tent campers um, tend to use, and um, it's normally to the north or the left-hand side of the vehicle here where you get some of the best views. Uh, again, that wasn't going to be the case today. Just up here is the main area. You can see the main track on the right coming in. Um, and this is where people often uh, park and jump out and just right off the side there get some cracking views of the high country. But that was just not gonna be uh, for us today. Um, next time, we'll have to come back. And that's the thing in the high country, you never know what you're gonna get. Down low, it was clear as a bell. Um, we get up here and at these altitudes, on this particular day, um, it's, um, you know, it is what it is. Just crawling our way over these rocks past the snow gums. Just coming up here on the left um, is, as you can see on, on screen there, it's the historic King Billy tree. Now I've driven past here probably three or four times, never noticed this tree. Luca was the one that pointed it out to me. And check it out. How cool does that look? As you can see on the screen there, it's about 200 years old. It's got a three meter diameter at the trunk or at the base. It's a multi-trunked tree. Just amazing. Parts of it seem to be dead with moss growing on it. Other parts are still alive. It's just not like any kind of tree you've ever seen before. And as came up on the screen there, it is listed as a state significant heritage tree um, by the National Trust, which is pretty cool. So next time you're up this way, keep an eye out for the King Billy tree.
literally just on the side of the track there. And that's where it's great to talk to other people that travel a lot in these areas because um, invariably they, they, they know things uh, that you don't know and they can point things out and um, add value to your trips. There's, um, you know, I guess they're wanting to keep that tree safe. There's no, there's no big sign pointing to it or anything like that. Um, it's, uh, it's just there. So we did get a little bit of a respite um, for the tail end of Bluff Track. Um, a little bit less rocky and we've come out here where we just need to turn left and take King Billy Track. Now, I was just double checking my maps at this point because there used to be a sign here and it's um, been damaged. Um, now that track there where I'm pointing down at the moment, that actually leads into a little campsite area there. That's not actually the King Billy Track as I'm just about to realise. It's the hard left here, which is the start of the King Billy track. And um, yeah, look, King Billy track's a great track to drive because it's it's never been particularly difficult, although it's certainly a bit rutted. As you can see here, right at the start, obviously it's had a bit of water on it and been a bit soft at times. It was nice and firm. Um, and yeah, a little muddy section here and another larger muddy section coming up, but it's still not what you'd call a difficult track. And when you get down in the bottom uh, of the valley, it's, it's one of the most scenic tracks um, around and, and, and still a fairly easy drive. So yeah, we had seen vehicles coming the other way with a bit of mud up the side of them. And so we knew this was coming. A lot easier going down you're not trying to get traction to pull your vehicle up the hill so we can take it pretty slow and steady through this and um, it really wasn't an issue for us you can see there though the spring water just coming up out of the ground and then running down the down the track um, you can see how that's um, obviously impacted the tracks over time Wherever you've got these uh, humps to divert water off the track, they actually tend to uh, create a, a basin where the um, where where the water can actually just pull. And again, plenty of water on this section. Nice firm base though, so really nothing in this section to be concerned about. Just very different than the last time I drove this two or three years ago. And again, normally you've got some great views off to the north there while you're taking this section. We then did find this and big muddy section like this, it's really hard to know how firm or soft it is. Fortunately, there was a guy coming the other way in a Defender. And so I just pulled over and waved him on and said, have a crack mate, we'll watch. And you can see he's done that pretty comfortably, L plates and all. Um, so uh, yeah, we decided it was uh, shouldn't be too difficult to tackle. So Matt headed through first in the Prado, and while it was a bit soft and went on top, there was a nice firm base. Um, so yeah, not not too difficult at all. These sort of sections can change over time though. And yeah, fortunately Matt being ahead, he was able to shoot some footage for me. Have the patch coming through. And uh, yeah, Luca followed hot on my heels with his TD42 GU. Actually it's not a TD42, he's got a petrol GU. I think it's the three liter. I tend to think of all GU patrols as being TD 42s because that's the one a lot of people seem to want. But yeah, his is petrol and thirsty. You can see there on the right again, water just coming down out of the hills. Tight little hairpin this one, a little bit off camber. It's a little bit tricky, um, but nothing, nothing dangerous. And again, 
not difficult, but very rocky and rough. So you want to take your time uh, working our way down the side of the hill here to the to the base of the valley. Lots of lots of timber, lots of trees just laying on parts of the track where they've fallen down or um, where they've been cut where they're after they've fallen down. Again, you can see another hairpin coming up there. And they are quite tight. Amazing rocks on the left, like you think about the work that's gone in to cut this track in back in the day when that's what they've had to, uh, you know, cut through, whether, whether that was with machinery or dynamite and hand tools, um, however the track was cut in in the first instance. And yeah, before too long, we're down the base of the King Billy track and um, the little stream here that has all the runoff feed into it is actually the very beginnings of the McAllister River that you will see later in um, a couple of days of footage in this trip. So there's a number of little crossings here of various side tributaries. None of these are particularly deep. Um, last time I came through here a couple of years ago, I don't know whether it's this one or the next crossing now, one of these, I found a two-wheel drive Kluger stuck in the middle of the crossing that bottomed out. Um, they'd gone up to How It Lookout and followed their GPS route to head home to Melbourne and it took them on the King Billy track. So while this is not a difficult track, a two-wheel drive vehicle with no clearance is not what you want to bring to this party. And again, just ease my way into this one. Wasn't sure how deep this actually was. It looked pretty soft off to the right there. Um, so just eased in gently. Turned out nice firm base, not particularly deep. A um, little bit more than a puddle, but still not particularly deep. yet another crossing of the Baby McAllister River. It's a much bigger river later on. I feel like this was the one where the Kluger was because we had to pull them out of that one and then turn them around and get them back across it. And then we had to help them through this one as well. And I think this is the last crossing. King Billy Trek. I hate to think how this one can feel if you're one of those guys that like to drive around at 40 psi. So yeah, just commenting there that it is pretty rough. It's As I said, it's not difficult, but it is pretty rough. Um, very rocky. And yeah, if, if you don't air down, you're certainly going to feel that along the way. Very scenic though, as you can see, like none of these crossings are deep or difficult, but very pretty. You can definitely take your time along here. I reckon um, half a suggestion of pulling up and throwing a line in, and that would have had his fishing rod out. Um, but um, yeah, probably catch something in there too, knowing his luck. It's not a, not a super long track at all, King Billy. Again, you can see there some uh, more tr dead tree that's fallen down, but somebody else has come and solved that problem for us. We, we're very lucky in that regard on this trip. Um, there are a number of instances where trees had come down and um, in, in all cases, somebody else had come there before us and cleared it for us. So that was awesome. They even left enough room for a full-size vehicle to get through. Um, again, another lovely little crossing. A little bit rocky, but not deep at all, um, and plenty of traction. Nice little climb on the exit. We are getting pretty close here at the end of this valley that the King Billy track comes along. Uh, and then we start the climb out. So Matt coming through now in his Prado across that crossing. Now what the cameraman was 
still in there, left, right, up, down. It's hard to find good help. And yeah, look at coming across in the big GU. It does have a nice sound, that thing. So, all across um, and continuing on, we pretty much now start to climb um, out of the uh, base of this valley and up towards Howitt Road. So again, there's sort of hairpins at each end uh, and the climb in between. Um, this section of the track was pretty dry, so no more boggy sections or anything like that. Um, generally in really good condition. A little bit rocky still in places. Um, definitely the opportunity um, to spike a sidewall. You can see there um, one of the springs up here just pushing the water down the hill. Just let the tyres do their work and climb up over those rocks. Uh, so yeah, if you're not running decent off-road tyres, some of those sections, huge opportunity there to spike a sidewall and do some damage to your tyre, um, without doubt. And again, you can see the rock there on the left-hand side that they've had to cut through when they've pushed this track in. Huge amount of work. As we're coming back to altitude, um, that you can see that fog sort of coming in. Now this is the King Billy Rock Scree or Rock Talus. I've seen and heard it called both. There's a geological difference that is certainly beyond my understanding. Uh, but basically it's a massive area naturally covered with a heap of rocks. Um, and apparently they gradually move their way down the hill. Um, the, um, the track's been cut in in between it, so it has sort of broken that rock scree or rock talus up. If somebody watching this video knows which one it is and why it's that one, would love a comment down below. You can see as we get up here on this next section, you can see more rock up there on the left. That's part of the rock scree or rock talus. Um, oncoming 80 series there, plenty of room in this particular area. Um, and again, here we are sort of at the top section of it. You can see on the left, there's some trees sort of overgrowing it, but then on the right, um, it's pretty open. Um, and if, uh, if I could turn the GoPro sideways, you'd actually be able to see all the way down to the other section of track that we came across. So back at altitude, um, King Belly track basically joins straight onto the end of um, Howard Road, and I'm pretty sure that sign there was the designator of the changeover from the King Billy track to Howard Plain Road. Um, not that we can see very much. Um, so it's only a couple of k's down Howard Road here um, to get to Howard Hut, and I didn't show too much of this um, because you couldn't see much. There's Howard Hut, um, that was in one of my videos um, just before. Uh, it, that's been published so um, I, um, I won't um, sort of cover too much of that off uh, at the moment. Um, I think we stopped at Howard Hut on the trip with Bruce um, last year so um, if you want to see inside Howard Hut check that video out. There's the long drop toilet on the right there we're just here sort of nosing around looking for a campsite. I hadn't camped here before, I've been here before but not camped here. Um, and uh, the guys just suggested that we poke our nose down in here and we'll probably find a campsite. And sure enough, we did. Nice open area here with a bit of a fire pit already sort of established. Even some firewood. That was a nice bonus. Somebody clearly camped here the night before. And um, yeah, not too long after we started setting up camp, um, some uh, a horse riding group 
when a horse riding tour came through. Always love seeing the uh, the horses up in the high country. Um, that was pretty awesome. There's a big group of them. And here's our camp set up. Um, Luca, then Matt, then me. So look, long video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Like this one if you liked it. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our content. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.